Well, it's a busy night in the land of severe weather across parts of the upper Midwest, and we're going to take a look at the latest radars from there and also uh, figure out what it's going to be like for the next few days. A brief descent into the land of gloom and doom for the Northeast and Northern Mid-Atlantic states, but it looks like we may be on our way to a decent weekend, albeit on the coolish side. And speaking of cool, Joe Rayo and I are here on tonight's Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast, which is brought to you by our affiliate, Tempest by Weatherflow. Get the revolutionary Tempest weather system, and you too can join the fastest growing observing weather network on the planet. The link is on the description to this podcast, and if you purchase the weather station, which, by the way, is very simple to put together and it runs off your mobile device, uh, either this or any of the other wonderful weather gadgets and gizmos in smart weather fashion, use the coupon code WINTER2324, because if you don't, you won't get... ten. You won't get 10% off? If you don't use the code. Oh, if you don't use the code. All right. Yes. If you don't use the coupon code WINTER2324, you won't get 10% off. Right. Right. Conversely, okay. if you do use the coupon code, you will get 10% off. Right. And that's, yeah. that's good to have. Yes. As we get older, our ability to do math diminishes. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I'm finding I'm finding that out. I mean, this is coming from somebody who I used to be able to multiply three, three, three or four numbers by three or four numbers in my head and come up with the answer. And oh my god, I can't even get anywhere close to that anymore. Well, now it's a it's a whole different story. You're in your sixties now. Yes. Well, my daughter, my my uh, youngest daughter, uh, who's uh, an, a doctor in optometry, uh, told me that as long as I'm aware of the fact that my memory is going, that's fine. It's when you're <laughs> when, when you're not aware of the fact that you're losing your memory and losing your mind, that's when you have a problem. Then so you have a problem, indeed. Correct. All right, so. Um, it, it, a nice day today for you. Mostly nice day. It was day a lovely here. day. Yes, you had a nice, beautiful. almost cloud free day. Yes. I enjoyed it. I yes. hope everybody out there had a chance to enjoy it because now we're going into direct tomorrow. And as you say, G and G and D on, on yes, uh, Thursday. Gloom and doom on yes. Thursday. But everything's moving along, which is really good because uh, it, it just looks like a. You know, if you start from, say, late tomorrow afternoon when showers come in and take it through Thursday, the weather conditions on Friday will, will be so-so. Got another weather front comes through Friday evening, and as long as it keeps on moving and it doesn't stall out and it doesn't look like it's going to, the weekend is looking okay. A little cool, but it is looking okay. Yes, yes. Well, uh, uh, you know, Saturday there might be, might be, a passing shower early in the day or early in the morning, but I think most of Saturday should be dry. And Sunday looks like the better of the two weekend, the brighter of the two weekend days, with sunny to partly cloudy skies. Yeah, well, very like I said, if it moves along, and a bit of a enough, breeze. Let me let me mention the breeze will begin picking up on Saturday and probably carry over into Sunday. Not a windy day, but a bit a of a breezy. breezy. Yes. So I, I define breezy if it's gust to twenty to thirty. And that's breezy. No. Well, and I don't if it if it's thirty or higher, then I'll call that windy. Yes, but I don't think it's going to be even that breezy. Right. It's it'll it'll be satisfactory this weekend. Let's put it that way. I had a I had a, I had a fairly nice day actually. There was a high, there was a lot of high and mid level clouds here into the early afternoon, which I, uh, with the sun trying to sort of dimly shine through, which is actually nice because it kept the temperatures from going too high, too fast. So when I walked this morning in the park, it was very, very comfortable. And then we had, you know, some sun during the afternoon. But, you know, I think we got to like, I think I got to close to 80 today for the second day in a row. So that was, that was a plus. And everything here is so green. Everything is really just totally greened up. It is uh, full spring mode here. It's beautiful. 
And uh, Dennis Cassie, I don't know if you're making a comment about me. I, I did pick up the last two days. I have picked up more than my fair share of branches or twigs off of the lawn. And I actually got for the first time. In fact, I got a post on, on Facebook, Joe. I have a picture of me in my in my uh, midge uh, resistant netting today. Um, the the, the w- what do you want to call them? Uh, shad flies, black flies, midges. They're all over the place and they will bite you. They will, they will, uh, it's, it's, it's almost impossible. So Renata put me in this kind of like netting and uh, I wore this netting while I was on the tractor today. It's the only way I could have survived all of these uh, teeny tiny little bugs that love to eat, 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 eat all over the place. Uh, it, it's that they're horrible. They'll only be around for another few more weeks. They, they only appear in, a, in April, and they're gone by the beginning of May. But they make, they make for an, an, an atrocious existence when you're trying to do yard work, at least around where I live at this time of the year. Well, the bugs haven't been too bad here. I, 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 I've seen a lot of bees, uh, and, uh, you know, they, uh, they're, they're pretty big. They're, they're not small either. And we do tend to get a lot of the carpenter bees. You could always tell them apart from the others because they have the hard hats on and they have they carry a lunch pail. Yeah. Uh, but but I'm, I was always amazed with, with carpenter bees how they when they when they drill out their little holes, they're like when you look at them, they're 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 so it, it's like a drill bit. It, they're perfectly circular. It's amazing, isn't it? Nature's amazing. In its own in its own way, how they just uh, I once saw I once saw like was it a carpenter ant or whatever that there was a nail in a hole and the the ant spent the better part of the afternoon, but he finally was able to somehow work it or maybe it was a bee or bee to, to, to get the nail out of the hole so that he he or she could go into the hole. Um, you know, nature nature is amazing. What, yes. what else can I tell you? You know who else is amazing, Joe? What? All the people on the chat board tonight, to which we bid a crisp, wonderful good evening to everybody on the chat board. And even for those of you who aren't on the chat board, but just sort of lurking around in the in the alleyways in the background here on the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast, we also uh, give you a uh, big hello and big hugs. So subscribe to my YouTube channel and Make sure you turn your notifications on so you don't miss us. We're on Sunday through Thursdays at 7.35 p.m. Fridays and Saturdays are off days unless there's a storm going on. And, of course, make sure you turn your notifications on, as I said. And if you like the show, hit the like button. Because every time we get to 100 likes, Joe Rayo, uh, like the uh, hunchback of Notre Dame, uh, rings the bells. I I have not had that privilege in recent days. Have you all noticed that? You have not heard the bell. We'd like to hear the bell tonight. Yeah, weather's been too nice, so you know. There's yeah, well, we have there, and weather. And, and, well, 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 yeah, and the and the later sunset. So they've been watching the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast on replay, which uh, you can find on uh, the uh, library that's on my uh, YouTube channel. So, so there you go. Uh, busy night in the land of severe weather, Mister Rayo. Tonight we have a number of things going on uh, in the upper Midwest. So we're going to take everybody uh, to that area on the watches and warnings page where we've got a, uh, a, a couple of tornado watches across Iowa and into Illinois and Northeast Missouri and a small portion of Southern Wisconsin. In fact, SPC uh, put out a special mesoscale discussion saying the next couple of hours we're going to be uh, um, on the critical side as far as the potential for tornadoes to develop in this zone. There's also a, uh, a severe thunderstorm watch that includes the city of St. Louis, uh, extends from a small number of counties west of St. Louis. Over on the Illinois side, uh, we've got uh, a, a number of counties there where we have um, a severe thunderstorm watch up. And there's also a peppering of wind advisories up uh, in the middle and upper Mississippi Valley and in the Missouri River Valley. Uh, in the uh, northern Rockies, uh, western Montana, northwest Wyoming. We've got winter weather advisories and some winter storm warnings up. And they're not really going to be getting a whole lot of snow out of this. And up and down the East Coast, no watches and warnings. This, you know, we've had these 
stor uh, storms, the storm systems moving through the last couple of months, and every one of them is, for the most part, has come with some issues, uh, be it wind, flooding, coastal flooding, or all of the above. But for a change, we're in this pattern now where it's basically just weather fronts coming through and whatever complications that they bring, uh, but not enough to really cause serious problems, more nuisances than anything else. Well, you know, the uh, the uh, CBS Evening News, which is what we usually watch uh, over dinner, they uh, they had quite a bit of a story at the very top of the show about the uh, tornadoes and severe weather that hit over in the Midwest. And uh, it's just funny, Joe, it's like, here's a, here's a view, a video of a tornado. Obviously, it looked like a, at least a an EF three, maybe even an EF four. And you hear the guy underneath, and he's saying, "Holy beep! Look at that!" And I turned to Renat and I said, "Well, we all know what he said. <laughs> was there really nece- was it really necessary to beep or bleep out what he said? Uh, I mean, I would certainly say that if I saw a, a a giant funnel cloud heading in my direction, especially if it was heading for my house, but." Anyway, that was the top story tonight on the national news on CBS. <laughs> well, uh, on the uh, Go satellite loop tonight, you can see the well-defined rotation that is uh, spinning away uh, in uh, eastern Nebraska and western Iowa. And you can also see those flashes of yellow and green and red are all lightning strikes that are going on around it. And there's quite a few that extend even up into Minnesota. Uh, and then southward from there. And there's even some lightning strikes going on uh, on the trailing line that extends down uh, into Arkansas. So uh, uh, it's actually been a pretty busy day with regards to severe weather. I was looking at the radar a little while ago, and there's probably a little bit less going on now than there was earlier, but uh, it just sort of played out that way. In the meantime, in the Northeast, uh, it was clear for the most part all day long, except for northern Maine. And uh, down into parts of New Brunswick, where there were clouds around. And also you could see a little cluster of uh, thunderstorms with some lightning strikes earlier in West Virginia and into parts of uh, nor- uh, in parts of Western Virginia. But those uh, have weakened quite a bit uh, as we've gone through the evening hours. And uh, out in the West, it's pretty quiet in the Southwest and into the Central and Southern Rockies and and down into Texas and Oklahoma and even into Kansas, most of Kansas, uh, in uh, in pretty good shape here. Uh, They are south of where the storm center is, so it's uh, nothing too crazy going on in that region. But here's the uh, latest radar. And as I said, Joe, earlier, there's four working severe thunderstorm warnings that are up at the moment. And I think a couple of small tornado warnings. Let me check Tornado HQ. And by the way, folks, as always, when you're when it comes to severe weather, obviously we're live now. But if you're watching this at, at uh, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at tonight or overnight or even first thing tomorrow morning, everything on here is dated. So if you're thinking that, you know, severe weather is a problem where you are, go to weather.gov uh, to your local National Weather Service forecast office to find out uh, the latest. So no tornado warnings up. Uh, there's one, two, three, four severe thunderstorm warnings. Uh, going on uh, Clark and Coles counties in Illinois, uh, Carroll, Rock Island, Whiteside, Clinton, Jackson, and Scott counties in Illinois and Iowa, uh, Henry, Mercer, and Rockland Island counties in Illinois. Another one that's these; those are the three. And then there's one uh, Henry, Mercer, Rock Island, and Warren. Some of these could be old war- warnings that were extended. Uh, and it looks like a new warnings just popped up in Wisconsin. Let me let me give this a quick refresh here. No, nope, I don't have it on the other one. So I'm seeing a box that just popped up in southern Wisconsin. Uh, two boxes actually. So I haven't caught up yet to um, it's Tornado HQ. I'll just give it one more here. No, nope. uh, oh there it is. Now, actually, this one was shown from earlier was expired. All right, so there you go. Uh, busy out in the upper Midwest. Uh, we've also got a few thunderstorms moving out of Arkansas and into western Tennessee. Uh, the West Virginia cells have died out. There's one dying cell moving southeast in North Carolina in the southern part of the state, but that is one lone leftover cell there. 
and a little bit of scatter precip up in Washington and into parts of Montana and Idaho, otherwise from Maine to Florida and all along the lower part of the Gulf states, uh, we've got uh, no precipitation uh, to worry about. So this uh, weather front, the low center is going to go way to the north, but the weather front is going to come into the east, Joe, and it's going to, you know, there's going to be a pinched off warm front with probably a little wave that develops on it. And, and that's going to be the catalyst to put us in in the uh, gloom and doom, raw and damp air uh, for later Wednesday night and during the day on Thursday. Yeah, look at that arc of uh, of moisture that, uh, well, it almost looks like a giant comma, if you will. And uh, the front edge, of course, working its way through uh, uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota right now, and uh, or at least at the time that we're uh, recording this, and uh, will eventually push on through the uh, remainder of the Great Lakes. And eventually some of that uh, moisture and cloud cover will get into our neck of the woods, uh, mainly later tomorrow and especially on into tomorrow night and Thursday. Thursday looks like a real showery day around here. Uh, we could pick up, oh, my, my first guess, Joe, would be at least, well, about a half, maybe three quarters of an inch total uh, out of all of this on Thursday to go along with all of your gloom and doom uh, forecast uh, outlook. Well, as it happens, that WPC, I don't know who said it first, uh, but WPC has a, a half to three quarters of an inch of liquid across most of Pennsylvania, northern New Jersey, southern New Jersey in the three quarters, Long Island in the three quarters, northern New Jersey in the half, the lower Hudson Valley in a half, and then amounts kind of tail off as you go further north up to uh, central and northern New England. And we also have an area of uh, half inch plus for southeast Virginia, coastal north and south Carolina. Uh, heavier rains uh, over the next seven days of uh, up to several inches uh, possible, uh, both uh, from uh, South Dakota, Nebraska, Northeast Nebraska, Southeast South Dakota, across Iowa, Southern Minnesota, and into uh, Wisconsin. Also another patch over Central and Northeast Texas, Southeast Oklahoma, bulging into Arkansas, and the half inch line gets almost to me. The set, the much of the west, except for the northwest, with the very just a little bit of precip up in the Pacific Northwest, a few hundredths to maybe a quarter of an inch. Otherwise, everybody pretty much west of the Rockies is on the dry side. And Eileen Berry, who's watching us from France, uh, is um, uh, hits the super chat tip jar tonight. Thank you, Eileen. I know it's wow. a little it's a little late there for you. It's got was it. Six hours or five hours, Paris? Is it five or six? I think six. it's. I, I'm not Is sure. It six, because then I, it, it would be one fifty-four in the morning there. If that's the case. Well, uh, she's in France, and if I just quickly check here, current time. Let's say in Paris. Current time in Paris is one fifty-four a.m. Joe, they are yes. two hours of Greenwich Mean Time. And remember that the aunts in France stay mainly on the plants. On the plants, yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. Ah. Well, let's um, let's go to the. I want to just take the look at the upper air because the last two runs of the GFS. If this winds up happening, uh, you know, we'll, well, I, it wouldn't shock me. It'll be the ultimate insult. Uh, but I'm. I didn't look at. This is my first look at the upper air here. So. You know, we've got this western trough that goes back. I went back to Monday, and you can see it moving across Colorado and into Kansas, lifting up northeast into Minnesota. So it lifts so far to the west. It's really all about the leftover front that, that we have to deal with. And then there's another low that rolls out from Lake Winnipeg and moves into southeastern Canada. And at the same time, there's a, a strong upper low that starts out over the North Pole and drops down into Hudson Bay and then swings into eastern Canada with several short waves moving along in the southern stream. One early next week that gets ejected out just to our south and east, so that would sort of imply that it'll probably get a wave that goes out to our south and east. As long as it stays far enough south, it's not an issue. And then, you know, another one rotates behind it uh, on uh, later Tuesday and Tuesday night, 
then eventually that tr part of it pulls out. Another trough drops in toward the end of next week, around the 26th or 27th. And then meanwhile, there's some energy that comes in later next week into the southwestern part of the United States. And then that just moseys along to the east. Uh, and by the end of the period, got a big upper ridge building over the southeastern part of the United States. If that happens, that's that's early that's early ninety degree weather for me. But uh, it does look like a coolish pattern overall uh, in the um, in the coming let's say week to ten days. Not that might be not not that means that doesn't mean necessary every single day, but the overall patterns probably be on the coolish side. But here's the situation for tomorrow. You know, that low goes up into Wisconsin, weakens, the front holds together. You get a little low that forms off the Delaware coast on Thursday. So we get an onshore flow, gloom and doom, blah, 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 after three quarters of an inch. Uh, there's a follow-up low for Friday that just, just runs up into Canada with a cold front, and that brings some showers through uh, Friday night. And then we've got a coolish weekend. If, you, if the 18Z GFS is right, Joe, it'll be dry all day Saturday, uh, if that's the case, and yeah. Sunday. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, you know, I, 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 just a, a, a small risk, and I know that both Albany and uh, New York or Upton is calling for a chance for a shower in the morning on Saturday. I looked at that and I said, well, if, maybe, maybe uh, as a slight chance or whatever. But I'd go for mostly a dry day on Saturday. And it looks like, as you just mentioned, 18Z GFS wants to go flat out dry, which means that we may have a dry weekend. And I, again, I think the brighter of the two days probably will be Sunday. Saturday may start out kind of cloudy-ish, but then we'll go into a, a, a clearing mode or a drier, more pleasing, sunnier mode by afternoon. And then sunny to partly cloudy is how I would brand Sunday. One wave on, moves across the Gulf states Sunday, and that goes out pretty much underneath. So assuming there's not a last-minute surprise, doesn't really impact the weekend. It would be a question of whether some rain were to sneak up the coast on Monday. But right now, it looks like it'd be offshore. There's a follow-up low behind it, which probably would tend to keep things on the flattish side anyway. A uh, little front goes by Tuesday night into Wednesday. And then there's this energy that gets ejected eastward out of the uh, out of the southern plains uh, for the end of next week, and just for laughs, Joe, because this is like a top, uh, several runs in a row now. It's got a nine. It looks like a nine eighty nine low with a million isobars wrapped around it, just south of Montauk, and dark blue snow over Connecticut into <laughs> Massachusetts. So you know what? Just for laughs. Just for laughs, I'm going to go to Pivotal Weather. While this is loading, oh, here we go. Uh, this would be the this would be the ir irony. This would be the biggest swift kick of all. You know, after a, a winter that did virtually nothing in many parts of the Northeast, to have a snow event coming in the last few days of 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 April, that would be that would be. A, That'll take care. That'll take care of the the, the midges and shad flies that have been bothering me today, wouldn't it? Right. Uh, all right. So just for laughs. Oh, I love it. Look at this. This is hysterical. That's for laughs on the <laughs> snow. <laughs> you can. You, can you see it? Oh yeah, I see it. I Four, see it. Thirty inches for Boston. Thirty-one for Wor Worcester. Thirty-four. <laughs> Well, a couple of weeks ago, it had something where it gave like 50, it was giving 50 inches to Providence. And clearly, we remember that event, didn't we? Hartford, yeah. tw 22 and a half, Waterbury, 15, Norwich, 12.8, Poughkeepsie, 12. I just love looking at this. It's just comedy. I mean, this is really just sheer comedy. Oh, dear me. You know, I'm going to just, just. Remember just, us from 40 years ago, probably we would be jumping up and down about something like this, right? Because we didn't oh, really know uh, at that time. Right. We said we just automatically accept, well, this is what the machines are saying, and the machines right. are all right. <laughs> Correct. Uh, let's see. Does the European have anything? No. So that's good. Uh, does the European AI have? Oh, the European do doesn't have a map for that. Uh, so that's just kind of useless. Uh, anyhow, I just, just for laughs, I thought let's, let's, uh, let's put that up there. 
Uh, I just want to go just go back and because uh, I, I didn't do this earlier with respect to the severe weather tonight. Uh, you can see the working tornado watches that are up there from SPC. I'll give this a quick refresh and uh, maybe just make the map a little bit bigger here. Let me just zoom in. Uh, but there you go. So this is what's going on as of one minute after 8 8 Eastern time. Uh, one looks like three tornado watches that are up and one severe thunderstorm watch that is up. And this is all inside an area of slight to enhanced risk, which SBC has been showing pretty much for the last five days because it had it in the long range. And the marginal risk into West Virginia and Western Virginia played mm -hmm. out because they had some strong cells late this afternoon and evening. Uh, but those, as we said, have died out. Now, tomorrow, uh, the severe weather area shifts eastward uh, to include uh, Indiana, most of Ohio, southeastern Michigan, marginal risk that goes from central Michigan all the way south into the northern half of Mississippi, Alabama, and North Georgia, including me, as well as the uh, southern and central Appalachians. Uh, and that comes with a 2 to 5% tornado risk, 5% uh, centered almost to Cleveland, Detroit, uh, all in there uh, in that 5% area and a, a a broader area of 2%. And then day three, which is for Thursday, I'm sorry, uh, yes, Thursday into Friday, we have this finger of marginal risk from uh, south, south central Texas northeastward into the Ohio Valley with a slight risk uh, from northeast Texas, southeast Oklahoma, across Arkansas, western Tennessee and Kentucky, southernmost Indi so southwest Indiana, and southernmost Illinois and southeast Missouri. So, uh, that but there's no it. way there's no way in the world on Thursday, if the maps are correct, for us locally here in the tri-state area to have any any qualms about any possible convective activity or any kind of thunderstorm activity. Not with the winds coming almost straight in off the water. I mean, and temperatures, as I said, here in the lower Hudson Valley, Joe, I've been seeing temperatures, you know, for the last couple of days, they've been calling for temperatures like 60 or upper 50s. Days. And so oh, what, that, ain't, that ain't happening. What are they looking at? I mean, like, if, if, if we crack 50 on Thursday, that'll be a bonus. That'll be the bonus uh, uh, number, because I think temperatures on Thursday, to go along with your gloom and doom, we're probably going to stay in the 40s for much of the day, a very uh, dreary day. And Again, with that kind of stability of the atmosphere, that cool, damp airflow, there ain't no way that we're going to be able to see any thunderstorms, at least here locally on Thursday. So no worries about that. Yeah. Oh, no, that's not happening. I mean, even on SPC's map, they they, they don't even have general thunderstorms anywhere close. They have, uh, they have the general thunderstorm line cutting across the middle of North Carolina. Uh, and back west from uh, western Pennsylvania, south and west. So yeah, no, no, no. That's that that that's that's yeah. It's not going to happen. No. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. All right. So I mean, that pretty well covers it tonight. I mean, do you have Brewer Jeopardy? Yes, I do. You do. How is Mr. Chanting? As Mr. Otori used to say on Treasure Hunt, yes, I do. <laughs> Where did you hide the check, Mr. Otori? Um, let's see. Let's get to uh, Facebook here. And we'll open up the message from uh, the chairman, Mr. Briller. And here it is. And uh, on this Briller Jeopardy, average, average or mean high temperatures in April for the following five cities, starting with your favorite, Joe, Atlanta. I'm sorry, what are we doing? The average what? The average high temperature in the month of April for the following five cities, starting off with Atlanta. All right, so I have to figure out what's, uh, you know, I haven't been paying attention to tell you the God's honest truth. So I'll say. Uh, and before you answer, the, the, there was a question about when does the snow season begin here in the New York area? And I didn't know that there was a snow. So I can tell you this, that on the uh, climatological records or the almanac uh, that uh, they keep at uh, the weather service, the forecast uh, office at, uh, at Upton, uh, they always start on July the 1st, and then they run straight on through the remainder of the summer into the fall and winter or whatever, and I guess the snow season ends 
on June 30th. So that's from July 1st to June 30th. That's the, uh, I guess you could call it the snow season. But, you know, uh, for, for all intents and purposes, snow is usually done in this part of the country by about oh, the early part of April. Although we have had a couple of cases where we've had snowflakes sighted as late as the 9th of May. But uh, that's right. Well, on the chat board, we have a number of answers for the average high temperature in Atlanta from Mike Waterhouse at 77, William Uber at 78, Eileen Barry at 68. But Patrick John, Dorsey. John, Patrick I, I, I was going to guess 71. Patrick Darcy and Chuck Cardillo hit it right on the nose at 74. 74. Okay. Who the heck good. is Eileen? Rayo, tell Eileen who you, you're married to. What is that? Uh, what is that? Well, Eileen. Well, oh, Eileen, Bar- Eileen, Barry. Eileen Barry. Well, he's married to Mrs. Rayo. I'm married to Mrs. Ray- Renata Rayo, who may very well be on the chat board right now. I I saw her earlier. Yes. Um, All right. Here's so here's here's the second city on the list. Average temperature, average high temperature for the month of April, and that would be for Boston. Boston, folks. Boston. I will say 56, 68. I'll say 60, 62. 62? Yes. A little bit too warm, Joe. A little too warm? Uh, yes. Frank Scaleris is 58. Frank Garces is 59. Northern Grace and Christopher Alley are both in snake country with 57. And then Rich Rothmansky hits it with 56. 56. There you go. All right, Rich. You don't, we, we haven't rung the bell for anybody, and uh, we're not going to ring it tonight, it looks like. Chicago, Joe. I'm sorry, what was Boston? 56. Jim Bounton's old number. I'll, I'll, I'll say for Chicago, I'll say 60. All right. Well, I'm going to ring the bell for you for that. It gives me an excuse to ring it. You got it right on the nose. On the nose. There you go. 60. 60. Now, let's move on to a city which I thought I might be visiting with the eclipse coming up, but I canceled down at the last minute because Dallas. they just they jacked up all of the uh, airline rates by like three and four power or whatever. Yes, Dallas. I will say Dallas is that's tough. I'll say I'll say seventy nine. Mm. Little high. Little high. Little um, high. John Melander said seventy four. Joe Z, Joe Z is within Snake Country. I think 78. Frank R, 78. So I'm guessing 78. I'm guessing 77. WABC. Bing. Yes. How about uh, number five, which would be Denver, the Mile High City? Oh, yeah, you know, Denver is so crazy. That is just, you know, that is such a tough one. And, and and April's a snowy month in in on average over the years in April yeah. uh, for Denver. I'll say I don't know. Eileen Barry says sixty three, and uh, Eileen Barry, you got it, sixty three all, all the way from France, and she gets Denver. Wow, sixty three degrees. That's yeah. it. You should ring the bell just for her. All right, I'll ring it. Can I do it in French? Uh, I can't I, do it. I, I don't know. I, I don't know French. Uh, does it the bell sound the same if you do it in French? I, I, it does. It does. I wanted to take French in in high school, and I was forced to take Spanish by my mother. Oh, it's so much so easier, so much easier than 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 French. The difference was that I had the inclination. I wanted to take French. I had the the, the, really, you know, I I didn't want Spanish. I wanted French. And that's why one of my best friends signed in my autograph book, Roses are red, violets are blue, don't feel sad. I failed Spanish too, so. Le crayon est sous la table. Yes. Right? 
And le here's crayon, the bonus. Le crayon the bonus. est sous la table. Yes, the bonus question here. The average high temperature in April for Caribou, which had a perfect view of the eclipse. Caribou. Oh. Keith oh, James, oh. you're in snake country with what you and say same with Mike Waterhouse. Same with Jason Fox. All of you are snake country. John Melander's in snake country. 45. 45, yes. There you go. 45 for caribou. 45 for caribou. Oh, God. All right. Um, I have no other breaking news other than my Asiatic lilies are blooming, and I thought I had it would be on my Google Photos, but I didn't. it didn't sync yet. I was going to show everybody my my uh, Asiatic lily that's in full bloom. Uh, but I'll, maybe I'll do that tomorrow. It'll give us something to look forward to, Joe. Okay. Um, I, 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 can, I can go for that. Um, I made chicken cutlets tonight for the first time in a long, long time, and I fried them. Normally I bake them, but I was in the mood to have them fried. I fried them, and they, oh, my God, they were so good. Oh, they were like heaven. Absolute heaven. The Food Network is missing a show. They're missing. They're missing the Joe Chiaffi cooking show. Well, you know, they don't. They know where to reach me. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast brought to you by Tempest by Weatherflow. Get the revolutionary Tempest weather system. Join the fastest growing observing weather network on the planet. The link is pinned to the uh, descriptor to this podcast, which, by the way, is uh, available also on Spotify and on what used to be Google Podcasts, but now is YouTube Music and uh, wherever podcasts, Heartbeat, wherever podcasts call their you know call their home, uh, we're there too. Uh, but we like you guys here on on YouTube. Anyway. Uh, get the revolutionary Tempest weather system and join the fastest growing observing weather network on the planet. The link is on the descriptor to this podcast. Use the coupon code WINTER2324 for anything you buy on there, be it this or any of the other gadgets and gizmos or smart weather fashion. If you do, you'll get 10% off. Yes. All right, folks. You know, April's, a, you know, except when there's severe weather going on, it's usually a relatively uneventful month. I don't think we have to worry about 50 inches of snow accumulating. Uh, late next week uh, in New England. So uh, aside from that, uh, we will uh, say good night and we'll see you tomorrow. And, and I thank you. Be- uh, well, were you going to do do what I was going to do? You do it. Well, we want to thank Eileen Berry all the way from France for hitting the super chat uh, tip jar tonight. And we came up uh, about well half a hundred short, Joe. We had about fifty likes tonight. So That's okay. no. Re- that's that's all, that's fine. When it's quiet, you know, when it's boring out there, sometimes it's great for everybody, and uh, it's boring. And as Eileen Berry says, Bonnie knew it. What on Good night. Yeah.